What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of The Road to Glory. The first thing we're starting guys is doing some of the Flash SBCs uh, that were around on Cyber Monday. I didn't record all of them, um, you know, some of them were just like very easy for a small pack and uh, if the pack had just absolutely nothing in it, I didn't show it. And uh, some of them I showed because I had to buy some players to complete them. Some of them I completed with players in the club and some of them were quite decent. For example, this one we get a special Sansone. Uh, so I completed this. It's so, so easy for a, a, you know, a nice inform. And he's actually make a good super sub and he's going to go on the bench. Um, first things first, guys, if you could drop a thumbs up on the video, it'd be very much appreciated. You guys have been showing some insane support on the channel as per usual. You know, um, this channel this year has just gone to a, a level I couldn't have dreamed of. You know, every single video without fail is slamming 100,000 views. Except yesterday's video, which wasn't in people's sub boxes for whatever reason. So if you missed yesterday's video... Go check it out. We uh, we got some foot champs gameplay in there. Some good, uh, actually not yesterday's now, the day before yesterday's. By the time you're watching this, we got some good discussion um, topics in there. And uh, if you just decided you didn't want to watch that one, then I understand. It's a lot of content. It was Black Friday, Cyber Monday weekend. A load of YouTubers were throwing out a load of good videos. Why wouldn't you want to watch those? I understand that completely. But, you know, this is episode 64 now, guys. And, um, again, above and beyond any expectation of what I expected from this this channel in general. You know, we've got the old, uh, for those of you that didn't know, we've got the old um, 100,000 sub plaque there came through for... Wait, no, that's the main channel one. They've changed it for the second channel. You see how small that was? We've got the, the, the second channel one there. So it's a bit bigger. Um, but this is an achievement. Like a, a second channel to hit 100,000 subscribers. Now I know that I can kind of falsify subscribers. Like I could close this channel down tomorrow, create another channel, and on my main channel say, hey guys, I've got another channel, go and subscribe to that one, and boom, you know, within a, a month or two, I'd probably pick up 100,000 subs. But I've grown this channel organically. I don't really shout it out much from my main channel. I don't really tell people to come here. I just put the video up and hope that people that are interested in this specific type of content come here. And they just generally do. So thank you guys for that. I really appreciate that. Now, what we've got today after these uh, SBCs is we have got a full game on Ultimate Difficulty. Uh, I get a lot of people... Now that I'm playing all my games on Ultimate... Um, I've got a, a, a very, very small group of people saying that I'm obviously found an exploit or a cheat or something. So, uh, you know, this is for you guys to, to have a look. But then also a lot of people that are just asking, how am I doing it? Like, they're just intrigued. They want to see the gameplay. They want to see how I'm managing to be ultimate difficulty and, you know, whether it's a struggle or not. And so, some games are a struggle. Like, my first set, I mean, I was fourth or fifth in the world when the refresh happened. I, I'm not in the top 100 right now because I haven't obviously played my games. Um... Well, I played the first one here. But uh, if I win all of my games on Ultimate by any kind of margin, I'll still be kind of like top 20, somewhere like that. If I win them by a good margin, I'll be sort of like third or fourth again. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm prone to slip up. I'm, I'm almost definitely going to take a loss here or there. Uh, the thing with Ultimate is there's no easy team in Ultimate. Because of the boost they get, they all get boosted to 99 in games. The, whether it's a 65 rated team or a 95 rated team, they all get boosted up to 99 rating. So I'm not sure what makes uh, one game to the next feel different because they do feel different. Some games just feel really, really easy. Some games feel really tough. For example, in my set yesterday, uh, I won all four of them on Ultimate. I won game four, which wasn't my most difficult team. Game four was a 100 chem 81 rated team. And I beat that only on penalties after I went 2-0 down and pulled it back to 2-2 in the last 10 minutes. I then went 4-2 down in extra time. But in extra time against the AI and Ultimate, they are all out attack all the time, no matter what. So even though they were 4-2 up, they were still all out attack and it allowed me to get back into the game. Um, so I, I got it back to 4-4 and then I won on penalties and that was against a 181 team. The team number three that I beat 6-0 or 5-0 or something, that was like a 184 team. So I, you know, I beat a really, really good team with ease and I struggled against a lesser team. And I don't understand, I really don't know what makes, what, it might be formation, it might be custom tactics, you know, it might be, uh, you know, literally again, like something like their formation countering my formation. So there might be some some things there. Excuse me, I knew I was going to yawn. Oh, 
Man, I tried to get that out of the way before the video started. Apologies, excuse me, man. Yawning in a video. I'm not even tired. I've been up for hours. It's been, it's been a, a busy day. Um, anyway, regardless. So, uh, yeah, you know, we're we're in a position here where um, some games on Ultimate are easy. Some of them are, are a lot more challenging. Sometimes the AI just wants to score. Sometimes, like there, there was a game um, yesterday that not yesterday on Saturday that I played. And I lost it 1-0, and the David De Gea legitimately had, like, 15 easy, like, ridiculous saves from easy shots. And I was just like, I'm just destined to not win this game. So I didn't end up winning that game. I lost it 1-0, and I only got 800 points as a result of it. But you're going to see the game here in full. Uh, so whilst we watch this ultimate gameplay, um, I'm going to go through the comments. Now, the two comments that I missed out from the last video is what we're going to go for first. First one's from Edward Wright. He says, hey, Nip, after trying for a month and putting about 200 to 300 pounds into the game on Black Friday, my brother finally qualified for foot champs. After playing this weekend, he has become so disillusioned with FIFA as a whole purely because of the weekend league structure and he won't be playing FIFA anymore. Surely something needs to change if people are going to stop playing the game because of the way the only competitive mode in the game is set up. What do you think? Love the series, bro. Keep up the good work. And the, the reason why I picked that, I mean, congratulations to your brother for qualifying for foot champs. I think that's awesome. But the reason why I picked that comment is for the line where he says, surely something needs to change if people are going to stop playing the game. That's not what's going to happen. Something will not change if people are going to stop playing the game. Something will change when people stop playing the game. And this was my whole argument for the fixed FIFA movement. And it's why I said it will fail. You know, I said in that video, I hope in a week or two weeks, people can come back and say, you were wrong, the Panthers. But I wasn't wrong. I was right in my assessments. And my assessments were that not, you know, boycotting one game or one day or one weekend or boycotting spending money on FIFA points isn't going to stop fix, isn't going to stop EA from doing what they're doing and it isn't going to change EA. The way that you'll change EA is by stop playing the game. When they say, like, if they have... Let's say, just for argument's sake, let's say a million people play this game a day. Let's say 20,000 people on Reddit decide to not spend FIFA points that day. Do you think they notice that? Of course they don't. Do you think if 5,000 people stop playing the game, do you think they notice that? Of course they wouldn't. The only time they'll notice is when their metrics go down, 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 down of people playing. Because if a million people are playing, but none of them are spending, then they have an opportunity still to turn those non-spenders into spenders. A promo, a special pack deal, new cards, you know, like whatever whatever it may be. You know, uh, like promo is obviously the, the biggest one and throw in a new promo. Path to Glory came out, brilliant. Ones to Watches came out. We have Team of the Year coming up. That million people that are still playing the game every single day, if you give them the right thing to cause them to spend their money, they're going to spend their money, EA are going to win. If that million people just stop playing... You can't convert people that aren't playing your game into payers, into buyers, into spenders. So if a million people playing, but a fraction of that spending is the cause and effect from fixed FIFA, EA aren't going to change anything because they're like, hey, there's people playing, they're not spending, let's give them another promo, a new prime icon, brilliant. They're going to spend money now because they want to get that thing for the game because they're playing the game and they want the best out of the game. But if a million people became 700,000 people playing, there's no, now 300,000 people that are not playing. And if they're not playing, how can you possibly convert them into spenders? So my whole argument was that with Fix FIFA. The, the Fix FIFA and, and what people think they want from Fix FIFA will never, ever, ever come about until they put the game down. Until they stop playing, don't buy the next year and don't buy any FIFA points. That's when EA will be like, okay, we've got a problem here. People are not only not spending on our game right now, but they're not even playing our game right now. We need to do something about this. And that's when they'll change. But the, again, I go back to my video. The, the difference in the situation is, is that uh, the, the, like, what people think they want isn't what people want. The general public, the general population of FIFA 18 love this game. The casual players love this game. It's the hardcore players that find... Uh, the, the little nuances that really ruin the, the experience for themselves, they're the ones that have got the biggest problems. They're the ones that have got the biggest complaints. Um, and on that note, before I get into a, another um, bit, the other comment from yesterday, is uh, from... So, Karam Sanger. He says, Net, do you think the transfer market needs revamping? When searching for a special item, it shows everything. But if you want to search for a man of the match, then it's hard to find. Also, when Team of the Season comes around, it's nearly impossible to search for the informs. 
of the team of the season. Players, keep up the content, mate. Hashtag Team Square. And I appreciate the kind words, but again, what what Karam has explained is the like what I'm trying to get through to people. This the, the issue with the transfer market is in general not something that bothers most of the people. It only bothers the people that like to play this game in the most efficient way possible. So when you go to the market and you want to look for a, a man of the match card and the informs come up, your your average Joe will just type in, uh, you know, who's got a man of the match card? Salah. He'll just type in Salah and then he'll start scrolling across. And he'll look, oh, there's some gold Salahs, there's an inform Salah, there's a man of the match Salah, that's the one that I want, let me go and buy him. Your average Joe will do that. Your hardcore player wants to go further and be like, okay, I only want to see Man of the Match Salas. And in my opinion as well, like I think we should be able to search for very specifics. I want to be able to search for 83 rated players, 82 rated players. I don't want to have to go just gold or special. I want to be able to search for like things without things as well. So for example, I want to be able to set parameters where I can find 83 rated non-Spanish players. So I should be able to go in, select rating, pop between 83 and 83, or find me all uh, 83 rated, including, and then have a list of things that you want to include already, but then also excluding, have an excluding section. So I can exclude players that are from the Premier League, or players that are from a specific nation, or players that are a specific position. So I might want to find all 83 rated centre-backs, and also all 83 rated left backs at the same time. And we don't have those capabilities. But who does that affect really? The minor, minor, minor population of this game. And so EA aren't going to spend time and resources on that for something that's going to affect almost nobody. Um, and, and that's just the sad truth of the matter. It is just the sad truth of the matter. And, and yeah, like you, Karam, I would love to see far, far more... Uh, efficiency through the transfer market and through how we sell list and discard items I want to be able to list multiple items at once at the same time now is there a good reason for not doing so potentially they could be like oh if we do this it just makes it easier for bots or snipers or whatever but who cares there's already those problems in the game like you know what I mean so I'd say um, one other thing that I want to do is like when I want to list contracts I've got like 400 regular gold contracts I want to list them Allow me to go list, how many would you like to list? Change it from 1 to 100, list price 150 start, 200 bin, and let me list 100 at a time. Who is it bothering? Probably, again, it's probably bothering the minor, minor people, but it's probably affecting in the first place the minor, minor people. So again, why would EA change it? For what reason have they got to change something? It's not a case of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's a case of if it... If it doesn't need fixing, don't fix it. You know what I mean? It's not because it is broken in a sense, but it's not broken to the masses. It's broken to the miners, and that's that's unfortunately the problem. The last comment from the previous video is from Orbit Truth. He says, "Is there a massive difference between Neuer and, and Farman? I currently have Neuer in goal, and my midfield consists of Tolisso, Bakayoko, and Herrera. Would you recommend selling Neuer and getting Vidal instead? Also, keep up the great work." Um, and this question just comes back to my own personal experience with the game this year and how a better team just doesn't make you a better player being a better player makes you a better player and I, I tried to like uh, you know preach for this last year a lot as well I've got the best team I've had in this game and I'm getting worse results than what I got during the early weeks like I say week one first ever week of foot champs road to glory I got 27 wins I was happy with that week two I got 29 wins week three I got 34 wins and week four I believe I got 30 wins so it was a good month. I then went and got 32 wins once on um, the second month of Foot Champs and 29 wins three times. Um, so I actually didn't progress even though I've upgraded my team. And why has that happened? Well, a couple of reasons. Number one, the other people that were playing Foot Champs that didn't also spend money on the game that had less time to put into the game, they've caught up in terms of team uh, teams and ability and... They've learned the nuances in the game and learned the meta plays. They've learned low drivens and low driven finesse shots. They've learned the fake shot stops and the drag backs. And just generally the, the average um, kind of ability has increased as it did last year, right? So that, that would probably explain the reason why uh, I might not be progressing sensationally. But also the, the difference is, first of all, I had a meta team anyway. But second of all, 
The team is only important if the player is good enough to utilize it to its maximum abilities. So in terms of is one player better than the other, if, you're, if you already have like a super player, for example, if you already have a Taliso, specifically even maybe an informed Taliso, but if you even have a Taliso, getting a Vidal or a Vieira or a Rude Hullet or even a 90 rated Rude Hullet isn't going to get you any extra wins. Because if you're not good enough to utilize the stats that you're getting that are bonus stats from those players, it's going to make no difference. And, and one of the mistakes I made a lot this weekend league, and one of the mistakes I've made actually since last year and that I just can't get out of the habit of doing, is using second man press far too much. I hold the right bumper or the R1 button on my controller just out of instinct unnecessarily. So what happens is, is when my opponent gets, say, a counter-attack, and I'm chasing him down with one player, without even thinking about it, I'm holding right bumper at all R1. And I'm dragging one of my defenders up, and that just leaves gaps in my defense. Now, it doesn't matter if I have prime icon Rio Ferdinand there, or, you know, Phil Jagielka there, because the problem is me. I've pulled that player out of position, I've left the space. Now, yeah, sure, a prime icon uh, um, Rio Ferdinand will be able to recover a lot better, and that's about the best that I'm going to get out of it. But in general, once you've got a good base team of players that have important stats in the right areas, there's not much more you can do to improve as a player by improving your team. At that point, it's about learning from your mistakes and improving as a player. So is there a massive difference between Neuer and Farman? Honestly, the truth of the, the, the matter is no. Because if you're good at defending anyway... You're going to be able to defend so many attacks that Farman's not going to need to make saves, nor is Neuer. And if you're bad at defending anyway, the shooting mechanics are so broken in this game in terms of low drivens and low driven finesses and shots from the D and so on and so forth, that whether or not you've got a bronze, Farman or Neuer in net, if you're, you know, if you're conceding clear-cut opportunities over and over again, your opponent's going to score against you over and over again. Um, so, yeah, like, for, for me, I'm trying to, like... Uh, like it, like, let myself know why I'm not doing so great with a super team. And, may, like, some people theorise, maybe now that you've got such a big team, you feel like you're deserved wins or you feel like they should play better than they are and you're, you're trying to just, you're trying to do things that you wouldn't normally do with the worst team. And that may be the case. There may be a little bit of that, a little bit in the back of my head of, oh, this is Hullet, let me try and shoot from 40 yards. Oh, I've just given up possession. I'm getting countered. Damn it, I've conceded. Whereas if I had Bakayoko there, I would be like, okay, this is Bakayoko, no chance I'm shooting, let me take my time and find a better pass. There might be a little bit of that. But uh, generally speaking, this weekend league, I, you know, I lost uh, 10 games this weekend. No, I actually lost 11 games. I did play my last game and I lost it. I played it like really, really late at night. I, I, was, trying to, I was trying new formations and new tactics. So I wouldn't really consider that like a, a game where I was actually doing my best or trying my hardest. But... Um, I, so I lost 10 games whilst playing my, trying my best or whilst trying this weekend league. And I shouldn't have lost a lot of those. And I lost a lot of those because I made mistakes. And, and that's, again, I, I try and explain this to you guys a lot. It's not to say that my opponents didn't deserve the win because they did deserve the win. But my problem was the fact that I just made so many human unforced errors. You know, in one of the games, I was 3-2 up in the 90th minute. I had the ball, I had, like, he, he, for some reason, he was on part of the bus still, right? This is, this is how silly I am this weekend. My opponent was on part of the bus, he was 3-2 down, it was a 90th minute, and I, I had two defenders in the box, and he had his Gabriel Jesus that he tried to play on the counter. I eased Gabriel Jesus off the ball, with my right centre-back, I passed it to my left centre-back, and then I stood there. And in my mind, I saw it happen. I saw him run his Gabriel Jesus between the two centre-backs to stop any pass from just me just simply passing the ball and then holding possession. And I saw it. And instead of just turning around, literally just moving my thumbstick away from Gabriel Jesus and punting the ball up the field and winning the game, I, was, I still was like, let me just hold the ball here and play the pass to my other centre-back and try and, you know, waste time, essentially. And he just runs into that gap, takes the ball, equalises at 3-3, and then he beats me an extra time. A guy that didn't, he shouldn't have been there. He shouldn't, you know, shouldn't have had the opportunity to make it 3-3 and to beat me an extra time. But I gave him that opportunity because I made a mistake. Now, and that, that again takes me to the position where it doesn't matter if I had, 
you know, two, the best two centre-backs in the game. If I have prime icon Maldini and prime icon Ferdinand or prime icon Puyo or prime icon whoever the hell you want to put in at centre-back, if I have the best two centre-backs in the world in the game, in that position with full attribute cards on, I still would have conceded there because I made an error. I made an error. So in terms of, like, teams, it's, it's very difficult to say put this player on and you'll do better when you've already got a good player in there because it comes down to the fact that you, at that point you are probably the problem and and I say that meaning not like the person that asked about Neuer or Farman didn't say he's having troubles or anything he literally just asked an opinion but for those that are thinking oh man I upgraded such and such player to such and such player and I'm still doing just as bad this game's fixed handicap is in play and EA don't want me to win they want me to spend more money no the problem is that you already had a great team that put you to the like the limit of your capabilities where a better team doesn't really push you through that limit you're the problem. I'm the problem. We're the problem. We're the problem. Uh, a few more comments to go, guys. So, Rodrigo says, Nep, are you going to start saving packs for Team of the Year? I don't think so. Uh, I remember last Team of the Season, last year, I saved 4 million coins worth of packs, including, like, 15 100k packs, a crap ton of 50k packs, mega packs, 55k packs. I saved so many packs last year, and I got absolutely nothing from those packs. Uh, this year, I haven't saved any packs, really, and I've got pretty much nothing from those packs. So, I'm probably just going to open packs as they come. I don't know. Maybe something will change there. You know, I was tempted to do some of these Liga Santander uh, upgrade packs, but I don't know. I might wait for Futmus to see what EA drop then. I might I might start playing a lot of draft and saving the packs from draft. Who knows? Uh, you know, I think um, that might be an interesting way to, to go about things. But generally speaking... I don't really want to save packs. I want to get coins to get better players so that I can help play better, even in spite of what I just said. Um, and uh, off the back of that, I want to, um, you know, earn better packs. Uh, but before we go to the end, guys, before I go to another comment, I uh, just want to talk briefly about Ronaldo versus Henri. So um, I see a lot of people wax lyrical about Ronaldo. And, and when I see all the top 100 guys, they don't use Henri. The 90 Henri, they don't use the 93 Henri, but they all use regular Ronaldo. Uh, you know, CR7, 94, 80 Ronaldo. I, although, you know, when Henri was announced, I said to you, know, I said to you guys, I'll make it my mission to get Henri for my road to glory. I'll grind and grind and grind. I didn't think I'd get him this early. I thought it'd be much later in the year. Uh, when I look at in-game stats of Henri versus Ronaldo, Ronaldo just is better. He's a better player. As a, as a 10 chem left forward with Hunter, he becomes a 95 rated striker, whereas Henri only becomes a 92 rated striker. And uh, uh, Ronaldo has considerably better composure. And uh, he has just better in-game stats generally. There's a couple of uh, sections here or there where Henri is a little bit better. But um, it, Henri, I've, I've made some good profit on. I made about 100,000 coins profit on if I sell Thierry Henri. And he's done great for us in the club. Um, and I'm, I, I want to know what you guys think. Should I sell Henri and buy Ronaldo? Or should I keep Henri? Now, the, the pros of keeping Henri are the fact that those coins in Henri are pretty safe uh, versus Ronaldo. You know, if I bought Ronaldo, who's up at almost 2 million coins now, if I bought Ronaldo for 2 million coins over Christmas and January, I know his price will go down. And so I'm, I'm almost definitely going to lose coins by purchasing Cristiano Ronaldo. But Henri's price will always stay pretty stagnant. But if it does change, it will change in line with the entire market. So if Henri goes down 10%, everything has gone down 10%. But if Ronaldo goes down 10%, might only be gold cards that have gone down 10%, or it might only be Ronaldo that's gone down 10%. Maybe he gets a team of the group stage card, and that means his gold card is less desirable. All the pros that have got him now dump him. They all go and get his better card. There's more supply. There's less demand. His price goes down. Um, so that's something to consider. So uh, the other pro for keeping Henri is that it's Henri. He's my favorite player in the world of all time. And uh, obviously, he's done a great job for me anyway. He has more than two goals per game and an assist every other game. Like, he does really great for me. Uh, but the downside of keeping Henri versus getting Ronaldo is the fact that Ronaldo could potentially help me win games because of his better composure and his other better stats, five-star skill moves, the extra traits and specialities. So on that note, I guess it's six of one and half a dozen of the other. So what do you guys think? Do I sell Henri 
and go buy Cristiano Ronaldo or do I keep Henri and save up for Cristiano Ronaldo? This is going to be the end of the video, guys. If you did enjoy it, be sure to leave a like, rating, comment and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.